Luminar shares are on the move this morning after the company posted a 63% jump in revenue year over year as it doubles down on partnership opportunities, including a new trucking deal with Plus. The company specializes in LiDAR technology that uh, creates or uses lasers that help enable autonomous driving. Luminar CEO Austin Russell is joining us now. Austin, it's good to see you. It's interesting. Last I checked, the stock was not dropping, but now we're seeing it drop in uh, in normal trading. I mean, a lot of the uh, what goes into investor interest in the company has to do with the future. It's not what you guys reported in this earnings report. It's the partnerships. It's the promise of future revenue and eventual profitability. Um, what are you most excited about around some of the partnerships that you guys are, are, are announcing? Austin, we're not hearing you right now. I don't know if it's on your end or our end. You got it. Yeah. So, so uh, we had we a go. great quarter. That, you know, exactly. It was, um, you know, we absolutely meet or beat all of our various uh, expectations, you know, when it came down to it between, um, you know, revenue earnings, you know, et cetera. Uh, but in terms of full year guidance, I think the key is, you know, we're continuing to execute. All Obviously, when it comes to like market dynamics, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff is is kind of a very, very noisy. Um, but obviously, we're taking a long-term outlook of what we're able to do, and uh, we're pulling it off very successfully. So uh, when it comes down to the business, you know, across, as you're pointing out, you know, multiple partnerships uh, between uh, and advancements and major commercial wins, you know, across like Mobileye has some new advancements um, this past quarter with a new OEM partnership that we're working with. Uh, Polestar is now offering our system um, available on their vehicles, which you can officially order. It's now the third vehicle model that you can have with the uh, with Luminar. Uh, Nissan is showcasing, you know, additional capabilities uh, with Luminar, including now intersection collision avoidance and um, very exciting one. You know, their CEO has stated that they ultimately want to have our technology um, as we execute standardized across their all their vehicles in the vehicle lineups uh, by the end of the decade. And then, of course, um, you know, Plus, which is, uh, you know, great new partners of ours, you know, working with some of the largest logistic companies like the Amazons of this world that we're able to see our technology deployed into. So um, really firing on all cylinders and uh, all of our subsidiaries uh, taken off as well. But, um, but yeah, it's um, the good time. Got to stay focused on execution. That's what we're doing. Austin, uh, across some of the AI ambitions that companies like yourself and, and, you know, even as we think more broadly, whether it's some of the larger tech companies like a Microsoft or even some of the other major automotive manufacturers like, like Tesla or Ford, GM, many of them have said that we need more semiconductors. We need more chips in order for artificial intelligence to really be uh, to, to come to fruition within the mobility experience here. You know, what type of investment is Luminar making in that and how much, what type of kind of profile or, you know, volume do we need in order for the, the amount of semiconductors to actually meet and get us to that reality? Well, the, the cool part is, is that we actually started investing in this stuff very early on. Um, you know, we made a big bet on this between, uh, you know, some advanced semiconductor capabilities and AI capabilities about six years ago. Um, so this is really starting in 2017, kind of went into full swing. So between those two things, you won't see a single, um, you know, car equipped with Luminar deployed without being powered. They're all powered by AI and powered by uh, luminar semiconductors as well that are embedded within the LiDAR system. So this is something that, you know, we're very excited to be able to get out there on the road. And this is where, um, you know, we've also had, you know, established new AI partnerships, including with um, Scale AI, um, that's now exclusively to, uh, you know, Luminar providing some key technologies as part of powering the Luminar AI engine um, that we're continuing to be able to advance. And at the same time, uh, we actually already have um, active wins. Uh, in fact, people have found our technology so interesting from a semiconductor side, um, even outside of uh, automotive in terms of people using our same semiconductors and chips, uh, including organizations like NASA that recently gave us an award for some breakthrough laser semiconductor technologies. So um, very exciting time, and uh, we're making it happen all together on those fronts as well. Um, Austin, I know you guys have um, have targeted at least a billion dollars um, in your order book by year end. Talk to me about where you are with getting to that goal. Yeah, so we're on track to meet or beat that just as the other goals um, that we have at the table, including the industrialization goals and getting the high volume factory uh, up and running live for, um, you know, starter production readiness um, for our automakers uh, before the end of the year. Um, so that's a key inflection point and game changer for us, you know, as well as, um, 
our other business goals more, hol more holistically and economic goals, which we're all on track to meet or beat every single one of them. So, you know, it's like I said, we're firing on all cylinders to be able to make this happen. And this is how you ultimately um, take the opportunity to see some massive market penetration and, you know, can build a hundred billion dollar company at the end of the day or even trillion dollar company at the end of the day as we're able to actually successfully scale, uh, penetrate the, the technology throughout the market um, and get deployed on more and more vehicles. You know, we already have... Uh, was over 20 vehicles, uh, you know, under contract uh, with us across the various automakers now. So, you know, we're exponentially expanding. Um, like I said, we just, uh, Polestar just made available our third um, to be able to launch. Um, so we're just uh, running through that. And we really start to see that multi-billion order book that we have start converting into revenue um, really starting next year and then coming into full swing in uh, 2025. Yeah, so just for the, well, the, for the investors, there's that window. I also am curious from the consumer perspective, from the driver perspective, and we've talked about this before. Like by the end of 23, 24, 25, give me a feel for like how many cars on the road are actually on the road, not just in development, are going to be deploying and employing your technology. Yeah. So, so when it comes to the technology, this is actually the first time this level of technology is being deployed on real production consumer vehicles. You know, you oftentimes will see for the autonomous vehicle landscape, this huge roof racks full of, you know, sensors and a supercomputer in the trunk that's required to run the thing, you know, that's, I don't know, like hundreds of thousands of dollars in total. Like part of the whole magic is that we've been able to, you know, compress all of that down to, you know, a thousand dollar sense system and sensor that can be um, cleanly integrated into the roof line of the vehicle. And that's something that's allowed it to actually get into consumers' hands. Um, so you're really starting to see next year, um, you'll actually have a, you know, significant number of, you know, consumer vehicles out on the road. You know, it's impossible to say exactly how many, but uh, we've given our um, growth trajectory of at least 100% um, revenue growth um, year on year in terms of our, our forecast from what we can see. So um, you, can, you can extrapolate beyond that. Uh, but when it comes down to it, for the vehicles, um, you'll actually see uh, between folks like Volvo and Polestar next year, these are really, um, you know, the first high volume uh, launches, particularly Volvo with their EX90 uh, of getting this out on the road. Because it's not just something that's an option on the car either in the EX90, it's actually standard on every vehicle they produce for uh, Volvo's next gen um, flagship as part of the vehicle lineup. And then Ultimately, um, just like you know, with the Mercedes of this world, of uh, how as we're working with and deploying the technology over the um, uh, the coming uh, couple of years, uh, you start to see proliferation throughout the rest of the vehicle lineup. So you know, it starts with that initial vehicle model, which is great, um, but you know, the, it, it it's even more exciting once you start to see it go across the rest of the lineup, and then that's where it's not just on the high end models that's deployed first then also across the mainstream models. And you're talking uh, in total, um, you know, in the millions of vehicles that we have under contract that get deployed over these over these terms. So gotcha. it's a pretty exciting time. I, I, you talked about this a little bit on the call, and I just wanted to clarify, um, you talked about some reports that uh, one of the Volvo vehicles, the EX90, had been delayed in part because of the integration of your tech. But you said that's not really the case. Can you explain to us a little bit further what what exactly was going on there? Oh yeah, yeah. It just seemed like there was uh, there was some confusion or some uh, reports earlier of like, oh, like was it was it like Luminar that had um, you know something to do with that? And that's actually uh, not the case um, there at all. Is that when you talk about vehicle software and other things like, you know, it's it's really unrelated to our lidar <laughs> deliverables or even our software deliverables there. So. Um, you know, it takes time to be able to, for, you know, companies to be able to get their EV lineups, you know, up and running and, uh, you know, rolling off the line, so to say. Uh, but uh, that was already actually embedded in our, our forecast for what it's worth. So, you know, we generally are very conservative when it comes down to that and how we're modeling these things out. Um, so that wasn't uh, necessarily a surprise. But when it comes down to it, I think the critical part is, you know, we're continuing to be able to deliver across our milestones. Um, and we've been able to do so consistently. Uh, we have a, obviously a diverse array of um, commercial wins. We have now uh, more than a dozen um, major commercial wins across the board. Um, so it's really more than the entire rest of the industry and landscape combined, you know, for major commercial partners and these kinds of uh, deal. So, you know, we're, we're excited to be able to deliver across the board um, and meeting the milestones for all these various programs. And uh, exciting to see, like I said, some of the new advancements as well 
um, for uh, for this quarter, which we've uh, we've had from uh, a commercial standpoint, including also, by the way, a new mapping deal as well. So seeing some of Luminar subsidiaries also like in AI and semiconductors, but now in mapping as well, start to take off. Austin, when we think about your revenue growth and, and the financial outlook that was provided for this quarter, you expect at least 100 percent revenue growth in 2023. And I bring that up because some companies uh, tending to sandbag or at least kind of lower some of the expectations so they don't risk missing on the guidance and the forecast that they're putting out. You're being very aggressive here. What type of margin profile would you expect to achieve? And, and you know, further down that same thought, how should be people be thinking about your company as you do move towards some of these targets? Uh, are you a AI company? Are you a semiconductor company? Are you strictly radar LIDAR company? You know, what is the annexation that you think investors should be thinking about your company as and thus annexing kind of a similar type of multiple evaluation? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and by the way, totally fair question. You're like, wait a minute, like 100% growth? That's like, you know, got to be like, one of the maybe even the like fastest growing company on the Nasdaq for like for the size of, of of business or something to that effect. I think uh you know the, the reality is and and part of the whole beauty of this kind of business and I think something that's very underappreciated um is that we've already baked in a lot of that when it comes to or even the majority of that when it comes to our contracts and how we're able to deliver against those um for automotive series production. I mean we're talking um you know as of last year we were uh we reported around um, 3.4 billion um, in our forward-looking order book. Um, so that basically ends up, you know, converting to revenue, you know, one to one, you know, plus or minus as we continue to execute, you know, as as people deliver and other stuff. Which, by the way, is independent ultimately of the specifics of the timing. But um, I, 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 uh, I'm generally, and and if you actually look at the history, I try and have a philosophy of in a world of companies that you know overpromise and underdeliver to try and be the company that will underpromise and overdeliver for this industry. Um, and I think we'll be able to do exactly that when it comes to not just the business milestones, but also the economics. And uh, we are also on track and um, with a trajectory not just for that um, you know exponential growth uh, when it comes to you know the business side and how that's um, scaling and ramping up. Um, from a revenue standpoint um, and top line, but then also uh, from a product standpoint, uh, we have uh, you know three key profitability goals um, that, are, that are taking place. So um, by the end of this year in the fourth quarter, you know we expect to be uh, gross margin positive um, to actually reduce our free cash flow spend by about fifty percent. Mm -hmm. um, you know as the the one time launch cost sort of start to uh, start to roll off, and then at the same time um, for the core business, we actually expect to be profitable. Uh, by the end of next year, and even the overall business um, for everything that we have um, by the end of the following year. Obviously, I want to continue to make the key uh, investments, you know, for the growth and additional growth initiatives that we have that I think hopefully people can see are already starting to pay off pretty substantially. So uh, we're not we're not crazy on that. But uh, when it comes down to it, uh, we're making it happen. And um, yeah, executing right. to a T. Austin, good to catch up with you. As always, Austin Russell is the CEO of Luminar. Thank you. Thank you.